But I don't want to give you a wrong idea. Dionysius uh, was not a good guy. The, this is what I found in the commentaries that are written about him. He was also known as Bacchus. And it's because the word Bacchus in Greek stood for the frenzy that he induces. He was the protector of those who don't belong to conventional society. And thus he symbolizes everything which is chaotic, dangerous, unexpected, everything which escapes human reason and which can only be attributed to the unforeseeable action of the gods. He is also the liberator whose wine, music, and ecstatic dance frees his followers from self-conscious fear and care and subverts the oppressive restraints of the powerful. So this guy's kind of a rebel. In fact, he's not kind of a rebel. He is a rebel. He, maybe he's like a Billy Idol. Is what comes to mind from those of you that maybe remember the 80s. Okay, what was going on? They loved to worship this guy. And this guy allowed them to disconnect from reality. And they love to disconnect from reality. So Rome said, let's take this place, you know, since they're so loyal, it's a great place. Let's put all the new trends through Philadelphia and let's expand our kingdom in Asia through them. And it worked quite well. Those who partake in the mysteries of this God are possessed and empowered by the God himself. That's what they believed. If you get involved in the cult rituals and temple worship of this God... Not only are you free to party, but also you're free to be completely possessed by a spirit of partying. I think in America today, we can relate to that a little bit. I said, I think in America today, we should be able to relate to that a little bit. We not only have people that love to be free here and love to party, we love people who are now possessed with the spirit of freedom, possessed with spirits of partying, possessed with things that sound good, but aren't good. Our country has come to be a place now that stands on a different set of principles than it originally did. This country was originally based on the freedoms that the founding fathers established, right? Through the Bill of Rights, through the Constitution, and those kinds of things. But today, if you were an outsider and didn't know anything about the past, you would think this country is not based on that kind of freedom at all. This country today is based on a different kind of freedom. The freedom that surrounds Super Bowls. The freedom that surrounds the final four. The freedom that surrounds the opening nights of famous movies. The, you know, which today it seems like there's an influx of movies that promote kind of this culture we're talking about. Way back when, this Greek culture. With Greek gods and, and maybe titans and giants and creatures from the past. And it seems like today we've come full circle into freedom and we need as for sure as a church to come back and say, but what freedom are we founded on? Is a frenzy of worldly freedom? Is a frenzy of the freedom of God? Can people find the freedom of God when they find you? Or do they find you bound by so many things in this world, possessed by so many attachments to things in this world? Ask yourself the question and be honest with yourself. It's not to condemn you. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. Jesus said himself, I did not come to condemn you. He came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. He came to give us that liberty I'm talking about, to give us that freedom. But do you have Jesus? Do you have the freedom? Or do you have a once a week experience with a group of people you hardly know? Who have strung themselves together around principles and visions, goals that you half-heartedly agree with or buy into? You see, I think the Christian church today has become something that's founded on the wrong principles in this area of freedom. I don't know why I'm saying this. Maybe this is where the Holy Ghost wanted us to highlight today. We, we, we have the wrong freedoms. We have the freedom to convene as we want, do what we want, when we want. Those aren't the freedoms the church is built on. Freedoms the church is built on are what we found in 1 Timothy chapter 3. Hey, I want to be a Philip. Hey, I want to be a Stephen. I'm looking for the crown of life that God will give to me. I'm looking to hold on. I mean, that's what Stephen was, as I said before. He was a picture of, this is the kind of man. When I meet this man... I will say, well done, good and faithful servant. How do I know Jesus will say that to Stephen? Because Jesus said it at his death. Stephen looked up and what did he see? Jesus standing up the right hand of God, welcoming him. 
What does that mean? He was saying, come on in, man. Good job. I'm welcoming you in to your reward and to this eternal kingdom that you've already possessed. 